Hello everyone. In this INR number 31, we are going to discuss a very important topic that is the AV node conduction blocks. So AV node conduction blocks, they are of three types, right? So what are these three types? First degree AV block, second degree AV block and third degree AV block. So these are three types, first, second and third. In that second degree AV block is having two types, right? A and B. So number one is called as Mobitz type A or Wenke back and Mobitz type 2 is called as hay type right so these are second degree so second degree is having two types Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2 Mobitz type 1 is Wenke back Mobitz type 2 is called as hay back right so now we will see the first degree AV block see the name itself is telling that AV block is there so why, why there is the AV block because of the delay or absent or inconsistent electrical conduction pathway right electrical conduction pathway through the AV node will be either delayed or absent or inconsistent. So that conduction is delayed or absent or inconsistent that is why we are seeing first degree block. So what will happen in that? In that you will see constantly lengthened PR interval. PR interval will be lengthened but and it will be more than 0.2 but whenever you will check them everywhere it is having same point so you can see constantly lengthened PR interval PR interval is lengthened but it will be always same constant so you can see these are the four PR value we are measuring and all are equal to each other so that is why we are saying constantly lengthened PR interval which will be more than 0.2 seconds so where you will find this so first degree AV block we can see in digoxin toxicity right and what is the treatment none is required because mostly the patient will be asymptomatic so what we are going to see in the ECG of the first degree block so you can see rhythm is regular with normal or slow rate so you can see the rhythm between R R if you look at this these are all looking regular so rhythm will be regular P wave, you can see the P wave are present and upright. P wave is present and they are upright, constantly lengthened. So you can see PR interval is lengthened and they are all same. So we will say that constantly lengthened PR interval, which will be more than 0.2 second. And P wave to QRS ratio is 1 is to 1. If you look at the P wave and QRS, so there is a 1 and this is also 1. So again, P wave is 1, QRS wave is 1. So this ratio of P wave to QRS is 1 is to 1. So this is the first degree AV block. No treatment is required. Patient is asymptomatic. Second degree AV block. Now we are having two things. Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. So first we will see Mobitz type 1 Wenke back. What happens here? It is because of delayed AV node conduction. Why there is a delayed AV node conduction? It can be physiological also, it can be pathological also, right? So Mobitz type 1, second degree AV block, they can be physiologic or pathological delayed in the AV conduction. Physiological causes are vagal tone, sleep or even in athletes. Pathological causes will include myocardial infarction, ischemia of the AV node, right? So what we will find here? In this, we will notice progressively lengthening of the PR interval. See if you look at the type 1 heart block it was constantly lengthened here it is progressive means they will be keep on increasing so there is a progressive lengthening of the PR interval and there it was no absence of the QRS complex here you will see there will be absent QRS beat also means P wave will be not present after the QRS complex and RR interval will be variable and they will be having regularly irregular rhythm right so now you can see that ECG what we are seeing as I said PR interval if you see they are getting progressively in large you can see here PR interval here it is PR interval they are all getting increased so if, if I say it is a PR number one PR interval number two PR number three so we can see they are progressively getting increased and when you are seeing after this see after this P there is a QRS P K, QRS P QRS right it is going on but suddenly you can see after this after this P there is no QRS right so we are seeing P wave but there is an absence of the QRS right and you can see the RR wave is also not regular so that is why we are saying progressively lengthening of the PR interval progressive lengthening of the PR interval followed by absent QRS beat so there is no QRS beat and we will see variable RR interval and they are having regularly 
irregular rhythm so that is mobits type 1 so what is the treatment here none is required he will be also asymptomatic or this patient will be also asymptomatic and they will not be requiring any treatment second degree av block what happens in second degree av block second degree av block is also called as mobits type 2 remember this is the type 2 which is also called as hay type of av block what is the defect here here you will find defect is lying in the his purkinje system right so in this system is defect and as a result you will find constant pr interval remember pr interval will be constant you can see pr interval is constant means all are looking same right so pr interval is constant constant and after after p wave you are not seeing the qrs right so that is what we have to remember that if you remember in type 1 mobits what we are seeing there is a progressive lengthening of the pr wave and qrs is absent right progressive and what we are seeing in the mobits type 2 there is a constant pr interval and then qrs is absent after the p wave that is the small difference you have to remember here pr interval is constant and qrs will be absent so that will be suggestive of mobits type 2 or hay type of av block so this mobits type of av block where his purkinje system is affected because of ischemia and fibrosis remember because they are having ischemia and fibrosis so that can cause damage of this his purkinje and they can develop into third degree av block remember so that is why this is the dangerous one see type 1 and second type of block that mobits type 1 they are not going for any heart block so that is why we are we are uh, leaving them there is no treatment required for them but this patient can go for third degree block which is complete heart block and they will be requiring the treatment as a ventricular pacemaker right so ventricular pacemaker is required even if they are asymptomatic remember even if they are asymptomatic as i said because they are having a structural abnormality because of ischemia and fibrosis so ventricular pacemaker is must for these mobits type 2 type 1 mobits was not requiring but type 2 will be requiring because they are prone to go for the complete heart block or third degree heart block so that is why ventricular pacemaker will be treatment in this patient right when we are talking about third degree or complete av block third degree or complete av block what is the problem there is no atrial impulse right so atria impulse is not conducted to ventricle right so atrial impulse is not conducted to the ventricle so what will happen there will be no atria will be contracting independently and ventricle will be contracting independently means atria independent ventricle independent both will be independent right so that is why you will find there is no relation between p and q or s wave they will be random somewhere you will see that p wave will be on the qrs complex because there is no conduction from the p wave to the from the atria to the ventricle so they are independently contracting so they will be having no correlation no synchrony will be there sometime you will see p wave on qrs complex as you can see p wave is on the qrs complex sometime you will see the p wave will be lying on the t wave so that is what we are going to see in this third degree complete heart block means there is no connection between the atria contraction ventricle contraction both are different right so they are independently contracting and that is why p wave is random p wave and qrs wave there is having no uh, there is no uh, relation between them sometime p wave is on qrs sometime p wave is on t wave so they are randomly going on so in this uh, which condition we are going to see this third degree or complete heart block inferior wall myocardial infarction it can be also seen in distalis toxicity and it will be also seen in one disorder called infectious disorder Lyme's disease so Lyme's disease also we can find them right and what should be the treatment in this patient remember as i said ventricular pacemaker will be required for this patient even though they are asymptomatic we have to go for ventricular pacemaker but because at any moment they can go for the heart block right so what will be the ecg finding so in ECG finding how you will see the AV dissociation, atrioventricular dissociation, how we are going to see. So you can see that P wave and QRS complex, both are present, right? Both are present. P wave is also present. QRS is also present. P wave is also present. QRS is also present. But they are all independent. There is no synchronization. They are beating independently of one another. Second important thing, because P wave for atrial contraction, RR for ventricle contraction. So if you check the atrial rate, pp value you can see pp value rate is the faster one right so this you can see their number of squares are very less so it is faster 
PP value will be faster. So atrial rate is faster than the ventricular rate. So if you look at the PP value, you can see PP value is faster than the RR means atria is contracting faster than ventricle. So rate of atrial contraction is faster than ventricular rate and they are having no synchronization. That is the third degree complete block. And that is what we have to be careful for the patient and we have to go for ventricular pacemaker. So keep learning, keep revising this best wishes for everyone.